Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, I would like to show you how to use the model management and dataset management capabilities on the Hugging Face Hub with a focus on uh, working with an organization and setting access permissions. In large companies, of course, with different machine learning teams, uh, it's important to make sure that specific data sets and specific models are only uh, accessible to the appropriate people. Okay, so we're going to start from a, a data set and a model on the hub. And I'm going to reuse uh, a, a data set and a model that I used in a previous auto NLP video, but you could really apply this on any model and any data set. Okay, so finding a data set and the model that I like, I'm going to uh, clone them and uh, import them to my organization and set some access permissions and show you how to work with that data set and that model. Okay, let's get started. So first things first, we should talk about the organization uh, and you can see my page here on the hub and I'm part of a, a few organizations and I created one which is called uh, JUL Simon Test, okay? And some of my colleagues have been friendly enough to join so that I can uh, 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 demonstrate a few things. Okay, uh, it's it's all empty for now. Uh, no models, no data set, right? So you can go and create your own organization just here. Uh, takes five seconds and then you can invite uh, team members to that org. Okay, super, super simple. Uh, so we can look at these settings here actually. So yeah, it's really just a name. I could upload a logo uh, and yeah, contact email for billing and uh, team members. Okay, and we'll go back to that uh, a little letter. Billing information. Yeah, no subscription for now and my API token, right? Okay, so you can create this. It takes really 10 seconds. And now what can you do with this? Well, first of all, let's go and find a data set that we like and a model that we like on the hub. Browsing the hub, I found a data set that I'd like to import to my organization. So in fact, this is the Reuters data set that I used in a previous video to train um, a summarization model with Auto NLP. Again, you could use any data set. So the first step would be uh, grab a copy of the data set and uh, create a repository in my org and push the data set there. Okay, and I'm going to push the original version to keep a fresh copy and I'm going to push a processed version. Okay, so let's do this in a notebook. And to get us started, we can see how to easily import that data set to our environment. Okay, so let's go and do this. Right, import the, the data set. Uh, I'm going to save a fresh copy to my local disk. Okay. And we see we have a training set and a test set. And exactly like I've done in that Auto NLP video, I'm going to remove some columns and rename some columns. I'm going to apply a cleaning function to remove unwanted characters. Okay. Um, so that my text looks nicer. Okay, so this is typical of cleaning and data prep work you would do in a local environment. Um, and now, of course, I want also to save a processed version of the data for, for versioning and just maybe because I don't want to do this all over again. Okay, so now if I look at my local environment, I see, of course, the original version right and i see the processed version all right so let's go and create a repository for this data set in my org and push those versions okay first of course i need to log in to the hugging face hub okay which i've done and now i can go and create a repository for my organization Okay, so repo create the organization name, the name of the repo, and of course, the data set flag, right? To say this is a data set repo. Okay, so done. Uh, I should see this 
in my org now. Okay, and of course it's empty. And I'm gonna go and clone that repo. And of course, I'm gonna start adding files. Okay, so now I have this repo. And I'm gonna first commit the, the original version, right, of that data set, which is the proper way to go. Okay, so we're just gonna copy everything. Right, so we see the dictionary and the two training set, and I can go and add everything here. Okay, and this is the first version. And now I can push to my repo. Okay. And of course, if I go back to my page, now I'm gonna see the first version of this data set, right? And I could add maybe, uh, I could create a model card, say, hey, uh, test, well, you know, Reuters, let's do it right, Reuters model for my projects. Okay, of course, you probably want to be a little more descriptive than that, okay? Fine. Okay, now let's bring in the process version. Okay, I need to pull first because I updated the, the readme file. And now I'm gonna copy the processed version of those files. Okay, and this is really the way you want to do it. You want to overwrite the, the previous files. You don't want to store different folders, right? Like, you know, dataset v1, dataset v2. I mean, this is really the uh, the old way, you know, no, no offense. So what you want to use is the Git workflow with uh, versions, commits, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if we look at this thing now, right, all the files have been updated and I can add them again and commit them again. Okay, and push them again, right? So now if I go back to my, um, my repository, of course, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see the history for this, right? Of course, you know, if you're familiar with Git, there's nothing particularly uh, surprising here, but it's when it comes to machine learning data sets, you know, it's not the usual way of, uh, of managing them. So this is really, I think, how you should do it, right? Tracing the changes, documenting your commits, um, and, uh, and tracing the full history of your data sets, right? Okay, and now it's in my org and uh, I can check the settings. I can make it uh, private to my org, right? So that only organization members will go and see this, okay? Fine, so now let's do the same uh, with a model. Here's a model that I like, um, and I like it very much because I trained it with Auto NLP, right? Uh, but seriously, you could just do this with any model on the hub, okay? So again, I'm gonna clone that repo and create a new repo in my org and move the model there, okay? So let's try this. Okay, so clone this model locally, right? And it's a, it's a big model, so it'll take a few seconds. Okay, so cloning is complete, so I should see the model in there, right? So the next step is to create a model repository for this, uh, for this model in my org, right? So repo create, organization name, and model name, right? So let's just do this. Okay, so that's a new repo and I should clone it now. Okay, and of course it's empty, right? And just like for the data set, if I go to my org page, now I see um, this new repository. Okay, so let's just go and import um, everything in here. Okay, and uh, 
Yep. And we can go and push it, right? So we'll just say, hey, git add everything, git commit. Initial version and get push, right? And yeah, it's going to take a few seconds again. All right. So now if I go back to this page, of course, I do see everything, right? Um, I have a model card because I was already in the original repo and I see the version, right? And of course, I could go and edit uh, the model card just for the sake of it and just to provide additional information on this model here. So let's just say this, for example, right? All right, commit changes, done. And then I can pull again here. Okay, and my readme is up to date. Okay, and the model card has been updated, right? So of course now it's in the org. Uh, yeah, let's make it private too, okay? And we can go and work with this model and we could go and fine tune it and, and use it for our own projects. So I'm not gonna go into fine tuning and in the interest of time, I'm just gonna uh, show that, hey, now I can go and I can download the model from the hub okay so notice i am not using the original version right i am using the organization version okay so i can go and, and fetch that okay so we can also load from a local copy right you can see the local path here uh we can we can use the pipeline api okay and we can use the pipeline to predict okay so this is uh, from a Yahoo article, and we can just go and try to summarize this, right? It takes a few seconds, we can control the minimum length and the maximum length, and we see the summary, right? So all this is local work. And again, we could go and fine tune this further and push it back to the hub and keep all our versions properly traced, etc., etc., right? So this is how you manage models and um, and data sets on the hub. And the last thing I wanna show you is permissions. So going to my org again, okay, I see team members. So let's uh, check them out. Uh, and I am the admin for this org, okay? So I have full access, I can remove members and use all data sets and all uh, all models. But I could go and say, hey, um, so, you know, my colleague Kunal uh, is contributing to, to the project, so he needs right access to the models um, and to the data sets, right? So he's, he's going to be not only, he's going to be able not only to clone them, but also to push new versions, right? And, you know, I could change the roles to something else if I wanted, okay? Um, I could have, you know, Brian, who's just um, uh, using models, that uh, that we work on right so he's got read permissions so he can clone and uh, and pull from the repos but he can't push okay so maybe brian is part of a different team and you know uh, we invited him to our org so that he can uh, benefit from the models that we trained but he's not allowed to modify them right and this is how you would organize work so um you know we we recommend that you create an organization for each team okay and um, and I guess you know most team members would have right permissions to contribute, and you could have um, guests from other teams who were able to reuse models, or maybe not. Maybe you have um, you know compliance rules that uh, well don't make it possible for uh, models to be shared across different teams. Who knows? So you know maybe Brian would need his own organization with his own team members and they would work on their own models, right? And you know, I wouldn't be part of that, okay? So that's what we recommend, uh, one org per team and then using either admin, read or write permissions for team members to control uh, model, uh, model management and data set management, right? Pretty simple, but it's a good model and 
hopefully it'll work for you okay so that's what I wanted to tell you today. Uh, as you can see, lots of model management and data set management features on the, on the hub and you know, we'll keep adding more. So you know, if you have questions, please ask them in the comments, get in touch. And until next time, keep learning.